Just throw a random fry in the middle. Oh, who's faster? That was good. These are winglets. Heck, these are winglets too. In both of these cases, small wings or winglets are used to transition the dissimilar flow of air moving over the top and bottom of the wing into the vertical direction, where it can be gradually dissipated without interfering with the aerodynamic lift behavior of the aircraft. Without these winglets, the convergence of dissimilar flow at the wingtips creates the turbulent shedding of vortices, which induces energy robbing drag, slowing the jumbo jet and raptor. Winglets on an airliner with a blended wing design offer a 2 to 4% reduction in annual fuel consumption, which translates into 65 million gallons if you're United Airlines and over $200 million worth of fuel savings. Heck, who don't like money? One construction of wing which reduces the occurrence of wingtip vortices is a wing which has no tips at all. It's called a box or closed section. The advantage of the closed wing design is that it allows substantial aerodynamic lift since it has two wing sections joined with a vertical section, but with a lesser degree of induced drag from turbulence. The disadvantage is that the lifting force is generally less ideal than a cantilever style monowing. But more on that in a second. Many of the MotoGP bikes employ a box style wing that is integral to the bodywork to get around the ban on winglets in the FIM competition rulebook. And as explained, they have the advantage of reducing energy robbing turbulence for both the bike and the bikes trailing the turbulent wake behind. This burrito is delicious, but it is filling. And since they're closed section, they also don't run the risk of slicing a rider's arm off on an overtake. A safety issue that led to their dissolution in MotoGP. 2018 saw the use of winglets for production bikes by the Italian bike companies Ducati and Aprilia with Aprilia employing a box style wing design and Ducati using a more traditional cantilevered monoplane type wing. Woo wee! Now Ducati claims the V4R's wings are more efficient than the types used in MotoGP bikes. Their intended function is to add downforce to the front wheel at high speeds for stability and grip and allow later braking in the corners since there's greater load and thus friction on the front wheel contact patch producing 66 pounds of downforce at 169 mile an hour. How did duty? There's also the added benefit of anti-wheelie generated by the increased frontal downforce. Now they achieve this downforce by essentially inverting an airfoil to create negative lift. That means flipping the wing upside down. You can see that negative lift in those colorful computational fluid dynamics plots, or CFD for short that Claudio presented in the world premiere. In the aerodynamics world, CFD is a computer-based numerical tool that engineers use to predict the aerodynamic forces and heat transfer phenomena generated on a body by the fluid moving around it. It saves engineers time and a whole lot of money since they don't need to build a bike and stick it in a wind tunnel. Instead, they quickly build and modify a bike in the virtual CAD world and run a wind tunnel simulation right on the computer. CFD breaks the bodywork into a 3D grid work, or mesh, with each line segment and intersection representing a series of equations, which are governed by physical laws. Environmental conditions or boundary conditions, such as airflow, pressure, or heat gradients, are then applied to this grid work. Then the computer solves these equations to generate the heat, pressure, and fluid contours on the body. Now, the gradient of colors goes from blue to red, like a rainbow, with red being the highest positive static pressure and blue being the lowest pressure. Now, in looking at these plots, it's important to understand one essential fluid dynamics law called Bernoulli's Principle which states that an increase in the speed of a fluid 
occur simultaneously with a decrease in pressure. So the higher the flow rate, the lower the pressure. And the lower the flow rate, the higher the pressure. And if you don't believe me, take a piece of paper and blow over the top surface and you'll see it moves upward. Woo-wee! Why? That's because the higher flow rate over the top of the paper is at a lower pressure than the still air underneath, which is at a higher pressure. So the higher pressure makes it go up. Huh, getting lightheaded. Ever open your car window on the freeway only to have your paycheck fly out the window? Well, that's Bernoulli's principle in action. The same thing happens when you take a shower and the water spray circulates the air inside the shower to a higher velocity than the air outside the shower. The higher velocity inside the shower means lower pressure, which sucks the shower curtain towards you, dangling pickle. So if you look at Claudio's contour plots, you can see there's a high pressure, low velocity flow region shown in red at the nose of the front fairing, trying to force the bike backwards. And if you look at the top of the rider's helmet, it's blue. That's because there's a low pressure condition created by the high velocity, low pressure air, shedding off the front screen that tries to lift his head up into the airflow. Like that piece of paper example. This is the buffing in your head feels when you're riding down the highway. Now look at the wings. What colors do you see? Well, you have green on the top side of the wing, which is low speed flow at high pressure and blue on the underside of the wing, which is high speed flow at low pressure. So obviously there's a net resultant force pushing the wing and the front of the bike it's connected to downward. You'll also notice this blue helix curling off the wing edge. That's actually the boundary layer of the upper and lower surface of the wing separating to create turbulence. Remember those winglets? Well, these winglets actually have winglets. And that's to help reduce that curling off the wing tip. Now, I already said too much already. I'm not gonna go into the air mechanics air foils. You can look that stuff up online. But heck, study those Ducati CFT plots. Now, that's good stuff right there. That thing is dirty. And it'll give you a better understanding of what your bike is doing when you're riding down the road. Well, y'all take care now. This is the Fancy Animal, signing out.